Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, everybody. On a cold December morning, I am togged up more than the average Eskimo. <laughs> I have gloves, I have about four layers, a hat, and all kinds of stuff. I've even got my boots on this morning, it's that blooming cold. But this place will be worth the walk. It'll, this will be a lengthy walk, about two hours I think around this place. Welcome to Heden. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Hedden, High Hill. With the vast majority of the Holderness coast now complete, we turn our attention to some areas closer to Hull for the next two episodes. This is one of the most historic towns on the eastern side of the city. Despite calling it Heden in the intro, the locals pronounced this Hedden as originally it was spelt with two Ds, although it does seem that both are used interchangeably. A small town by East Riding standards, this lies five miles east of Hull. It wasn't mentioned in the Doomsday Book, and records of the place only began in 1115. It's a classic example of a Norman town, and it was founded by William Le Gros, Lord of Holderness, and the Earl of Ormal in Normandy. Initially, it was set up as a royal mint town and produced silver pennies. It became a very important port, one of the largest in the country at one time. These days, it's an ideal place for the commuter, be it to Hull, Beverley, or to the East Riding's coastal towns. It does retain its own historic town centre though, which still attracts tourists. Notable people to have come from the place include the potter Dorothy Marion Campbell, the politician and father of Canadian Confederation Sir Alexander Campbell, and mezzo-soprano singer Amy Black, who's buried in the town cemetery. It's a big one this, and loaded with history, so let's check out what's on offer. Trust me, it's more than meets the eye. We begin at the north of the town on the road to Preston, in a car park opposite the former Hedden railway station. Hedden was on the Hull and Holderness railway, and the stretch of the line that ran through the town is now part of the walking trail between Hull and Winestead. Hedden station proved a vital part of the local transport system for over a century. Passenger services ended here in 1965, when the station closed under the beaching axe. The line from Hull, though, remained open for goods until 1968. Let's follow the line's route for a short way. We leave it where it hits Magdalen Lane, close to this big building. That's Magdalen Park, an award-winning care home managed by Your Care. It even includes an in-house pub known as the Magdalen Arms. If pubs are your thing, by the way, no fear, there's a few around this route. Most are in the town centre, but to get there, we have to make our way first through some residential areas. Hedden is a small town, yes, but it has one of the highest population densities in the East Riding. Sayings involving sardines and tins certainly spring to mind here. 
This footpath will take us through one of the most densely populated areas, the Inman's Estate, a series of cul-de-sacs surrounding a central green with linkways connecting the various roads together. This area was one of the hardest hit by the widespread floods that affected the UK in 2007. In fact, most of the town's southernmost areas were, owing to the various waterways in this part of the East Riding. Speaking of the weather, in August 2000, a freak mini tornado in the Humber estuary caused flash floods and hailstones to drop on parts of the town too. This is Inman's Primary School, one of two in the town. This one is the much newer of the pair. The current building was erected in 2010, replacing a school which was literally next door. It stands on what was just an open piece of grass beforehand. The site of the old school is now under its car park. Inman's Road rounds a bend after the school and heads back to where we've just been, so instead of retracing my steps, I used a little walkway to get to another street. In doing so, I passed the local kids club, handily signposted at this point. Next we have St Nicholas Gate. Again, we're on another housing estate, but this one stands on a piece of head and history. St Nicholas's Old Church was located approximately midway along this road near the junction with Charles Street, which we're now following to the south. It was a medieval foundation which had already ceased by the time of Henry VIII, perhaps due to the Reformation. Its foundations were still visible in what was a field before this estate was built over its site. Its exact location is now indeterminable. The estate has brought us onto Thorn Road, or the B1240 if you will. This is the main road south out of the town towards the A1033 Head and Bypass. It passes several blocks of flats on its way, including this one, Thornbridge Court. Now, do you remember Humbleton Beck, the small stream we crossed in the village of the same name? Well, believe it or not here, you're looking at the exact same waterway. It splits the town into two pieces, and it's now canalised at this point. It's much bigger and wider, and its name has changed. It's now Burstwick Drain. Now, if you were to carry on over Burstwick Drain to the southern portion of Heden, you wouldn't see a great amount of things, to be honest with you. It's basically a massive housing estate, lots of dead-end cul-de-sacs and stuff like that. Certainly not worth us walking around it. So instead, we're going to follow Burstwick Drain, thanks to this path here, which is right next to it. We'll go alongside it for a bit. It'll bring us out at the sports field. There are several small footbridges across Burstwick Drain, but the one we need is much further to the west. Following this path for a while, we pass a big patch of allotments. That'll be enough to keep the fans happy for another day. It's not long before we're crossing Sheriff Highway, which used to be known as Westgate or Sheriff Bridge Way. Given the watery nature of the area and Hedden's history of flooding, it's important that Burstwick Drain keeps flowing into the Humber. Water maintenance buildings like these, therefore, are plentiful in the town. On the other side of Burstwick Drain are two communal buildings. The one on the right here is Head and Scout Hut, but it's the one on the left that's way more interesting. That's the Amy Black Community Centre, named in honour of Hedden's very own internationally renowned opera singer. Black was a mezzo-soprano trained by the Royal Academy of Music. In 2002, she gave a solo recital at the British Embassy in Paraguay to celebrate the Queen's Golden Jubilee. Black had a bicuspid aortic heart valve and died in 2009, aged just 36. Next, it's Havenside, where we find a petting farm. Even though it's not on the same scale as others like it, Little Haven describes itself as having a quaint, rustic, community feel to it. Visitors to it can meet everything from reindeer to turkeys, guinea pigs to goats, sheep, chickens, and even an eagle owl. This is definitely a farming area. Here's Havenside Poultry, located just over the road. By far the most eye-catching building here, though, is Harbour Farmhouse. 18th century enlisted grade 2, its name brings us to Hedden's most historic area. Havenside is so named because it's a reference to Hedden Haven, a river which used to be the lifeblood of the town. This whole area is also known as Hedden Haven or The Haven, and situated within it is the Haven Arms pub. 
This is still known by many locals as the Borough Arms, and it originally opened in 1825 as the Corporation Arms. A plaque above its door bears testament to that fact. The place was built to serve those who worked and visited the Haven, Hedden's Port, which at one time was the largest on the Humber and the 11th biggest in England. At its peak, the port had three canalised arms which curved around the town almost like a moat. The main basin was located between Sheriff Highway and Thorn Road. It handled timber, today reflected in the name of the modern street, Woodmarket Gate. As Hull developed more and more into the port it is today, increasingly larger ships couldn't get up the small river to Hedden, and so the port declined. It was filled in in the 1970s, but there are plans to revive part of the haven as a pleasure waterway with a marina and a country park. It should be noted that Hedden Haven still exists. Burstwick Drain feeds its western end, which outfalls into the Humber at Salt End. After crossing the drain, we're now at a sports ground. The locals know this as Far Bank. It marks what was the old boundary of Hedden before the Westlands estate was built. South Holderness Cricket Club play here, as their middle lane ground forms part of it. Normally a quiet area with a playground and a skate park, this is where the popular Headfest Music Festival takes place every year. Here's a football pitch, but Hedden's main team don't play here. Although named Hedden Rangers, they actually play in Preston at the Eastside Community Sports Trust Complex on Staithes Road. Here's their logo. They were founded in 1982 and have a range of teams, including a women's side. Backing onto the football pitch is a retirement complex, the Holderness Grange Lifestyle Village. It was built in 2006 and was the first of its kind anywhere in Hull. In total, it has 129 flats, bungalows and houses, and a restaurant that's open to the public. Johnson Court now. This is named after Hull-born aviator Amy Johnson because Hedden was her arrival point on her homecoming after the record-breaking solo flight to Australia in 1930. Crossing a small grassed area, we're now in the Westlands estate. This was the other area that was badly hit by the 2007 UK floods. Traditionally, this was never part of Hedden, but it is now. Until the Reformation, Westlands was a barren area owned by a religious order. Now very much residential, this estate leads us out onto the B1362 New Road. So to get to this point, it's took me just over an hour. Nice walk in the uh, early morning December sunshine. Now we've seen some interesting stuff up to now, but it's about to go up a notch because now we're going to explore Heaton's town centre. We're going to snake our way around it before ending up back at the rail trail car park. The first landmark in the vicinity of the town centre is the police station. That's this building in front of us here. Hedden's town centre is a tightly packed network of narrow streets, so this route isn't straightforward. Turning off New Road, we're now going up Ketwell Lane. This is a terrace street, but it also features an enormous telephone exchange. This one serves Hedden, Paul and Preston. Just after it, we find a vets on the other side, which gives us our first look at Hedden's colossal church. We're making our way towards that. The top of Ketwell Lane is a footpath which will take us to Ivy Lane. It passes the other primary school in the process. This is Hedden Primary and together with Inman's, the two cater for around 500 pupils across the town. If you turn left at the end, you'll find the town's cemetery. Among those interred within it is Amy Black. Hundreds of mourners attended her funeral on the 9th of December 2009. Let's head now towards Market Hill. On the way, we pass a pond, complete with a deep water warning, before we hit the old village green. Hedden might be a town these days, but it was a village beforehand, you know. This is the oldest part of the town, and centuries ago would have been its focal point. On the green we find a beacon. This has been lit a few times, most recently in 2022, to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Look to the left next and you'll see two notable buildings on Market Hill. One is the local surgery, Church View, and the other is Head Nursery School. Now let's turn our attention to the church, which towers over this area as well as the rest of the town. 
St. Augustine's Church is awe-inspiringly cathedral-like in its appearance. It dates back to 1190 and it took 250 years to complete. The last part of it to be built was its tower, which was finished in the mid-15th century. Due to its staggering proportions, it's often known as the King of Holderness, and of course it's a Grade 1 listed building. It was restored in the 19th century by G. E. Street, a man closely associated with Victorian renovations. Its impressive stained glass window depicting Christ in Majesty and St. Augustine of Hippo dates from Street's time. Amy Black was a former choir girl here and helped to raise thousands of pounds for this church in her time. Recent repairs to the church's structural masonry and carvings have brought back an air of respectability to this proud old patriarch. It's a fabulous building, all ends up. We've walked all the way around the church and ended up on Church Lane. Our next job is to find the Methodist Church, which is just a few steps away. Between the two is another car park. There's a few of these around the town, so you're never short of a space in Hedden. This building has been many things in its time. It was once a fancy dress costume shop, but now it's Hedden Insurance. Opposite this is the Methodist Church, part of the South Holderness Circuit, which covers an area from Withensee all the way through to East Hull and Kingswood. We've emerged back onto New Road, and after passing the old customer service centre on the left, we're heading towards the town centre's main shopping area, St Augustine's Gate, a one-way street named after the church and loaded with lovely old buildings. For starters, look no further than the Queen's Head pub. Although it looks very old, it's actually Mock Tudor. It's known for a few things, but it's very popular with the younger crowd because it's primarily a sports pub. It also hosts a very popular bingo session on Monday afternoons. Almost directly opposite the pub is Courtly Mews. This is a private courtyard, but the public have right of access. On its wall is a tablet which gives a potted history of the town stretching back to 1115, the year when Hedden was first mentioned in records. Hedden has a plethora of shops, ranging from the household name to the independent. However, it's the town hall which has the biggest attraction here. Seen here, this contains a rare civic silver collection, including England's oldest civic mace, a weapon of war dating back to 1415. Next door is Hedden Spice, an Indian restaurant within what appears to be a converted old chapel or some kind of public building. Here I cross the road to leave a card on the parish notice board found on the town hall's wall. There's 38 to go. Let's continue into the marketplace, passing as we go this local branch of Lloyd's. We also pass the Head and Centre, which is primarily a library but has other services within it too. Hedden's marketplace might only be small, but it can be quite busy, especially on Wednesdays, which is the market day here. The marketplace is where the Christmas tree goes every year. The town has held a market for over 800 years, and whatever the weather, stall holders here go above and beyond to ensure they can still serve their regular customers. In full swing, Hedden has everything that the ardent market goer requires. For visitors, the market is quite often the first introduction to the town, and it's a starting point for visits to other attractions in the place like the museum, the shops, the cafes and the pubs. And speaking of pubs, there's another one not far away from the marketplace. On the right of your screen here is the King's Head. Refurbished in 2015, it's a Grade 2 listed building with a front bar and a lounge to the rear. It features regular quiz nights and charity auctions. Magdalene Gate next and the Hedden Royal British Legion Club. This features a concert room that can accommodate up to 90 people. Just up the road is Magdalene House, another of the Grade 2 listed buildings in the town. It was built in 1820 but was later altered in the 1870s. After briefly turning onto Baxter Gate we find George Street. This used to be called Swinegate or Wingate but was renamed George Street in honour of George Sawyer who was the town's mayor in 1825. He had a hand in building some of the shops in the marketplace. On Baxtergate we find the last pub on this walk, the Shakespeare Inn. Its landlady is the daughter of the former Hull KR player Phil Lowe. Known as the Shaky by many, this one's all about food. 
Last year, The Shakespeare was nominated for Punch Pub of the Year in the Great British Pub Awards. Just up the street is a Catholic church. This was originally a mission, supported by the Metcalfe family under the protection of the constables. The church, dedicated to St Mary and St Joseph, was built in 1803 behind two much earlier cottages. Bang Next Door is Abermal, a two-storey specialist dementia home for 42 residents with a very distinctive pointy roof. On the other side of the road is a private day nursery, preschool and kids club named Songbirds. This features a forest school area with two rabbits and three chickens. Back to the B1362, it's now become Fletchergate, which has some massive houses. This is the street where head and solicitor William Iveson Sr. once lived. He was under steward to the Lord of the Manor, William Constable, and the Deputy Sheriff of Yorkshire. The last part of the walk sees us head back towards the station and the car park via another residential area. This is St Anthony's Park, which becomes Watson Drive at Fuston Garth. It leads back to Magdalen Lane and towards Watson Park. Watson Park is nothing like Farbank. It's owned by Hedden Town Council and is what's known as a patch of amenity land. Part of it is purposely left wild and the rest is rough cut. Skirting around its edge, Station Lane is our last street, which runs back to the car park where we began two hours ago. As we've learned throughout this video, Hedden has a lot of pubs. There were 13 at one time, though now there's only six. There is one that the route didn't pass, the station, which is arguably the most historic of the lot. Originally called the Governor's House, it's been known as the Sun and the Durham Ox in its time. Since 1880, it's been called the station, in reference to the actual station nearby on the Hull and Holdness Railway. At various points, it had the words inn or hotel tagged onto the end of it. It's a cosy, traditional building with multiple rooms and a large garden to the rear, incorporating a children's play area. It closed in 2019 and had for four years been left empty and seemingly forgotten about. But it reopened last April under the ownership of Star Pubs and Bars, who invested a whopping £340,000 into the building's renovation. There are plans to start a darts team, host live sports and put on events here. The garden will also be used for Easter egg hunts and live music too, as well as having games for kids, like a giant Jenga for example. With Hedden in the books, we now only have one left on the eastern side of Hull. It's practically conjoined to Hedden in fact, and lies just over a mile away from the town centre. The two share a school, Holderness Academy, located between them. Join me next week as we learn a bit more about Hedden's little brother. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.